Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're in part two of seven years in addiction. In case you haven't watched part one, I'm going to be linking um, the video down below. We're doing all of this in partnership with Sip Creative Galaxy and we're here at the beautiful Margarita House in Karen. Now part two, I want to delve deeper into life after addiction and just generally rebuilding my life. I hope that my story will be um, encouraging to somebody who might be going through depression, uh, drug addiction, or any hopelessness or brokenness of any kind. In case you enjoy this video, which I think you will, kindly hit the subscription button below and turn on the notification bell so that each time I upload a video, you will be in the know and you will be early rather than late. In all this aspect of rebuilding and getting to the place of triumph, tell us about your journey um, post rehab now. You're done with the fourth um, rehab center you have been to. So let us know what that was, like the really first experience of, okay, I'm rebuilding. Uh, when I was leaving rehab, I didn't really have a clear picture of what I was going to do, where I was going to go. I was just sort of like, you know, I don't want to put pressure on myself because I've always this, been this person who's like, I want to achieve, I want to make it, I want to be successful. But this time I had a different approach to it even coming out. I had this one day at a time mentality. It wasn't a long term goal where I was thinking 10 years from now, marriage, kids, and then getting confused. Obviously that was in the back of my mind but um i i was just on this whole vibe of just be led for the day do what you need to do for the day you know be at the right place at the right time with the right people and and everything just began to fall into place so it wasn't a struggle i wasn't coming out thinking oh my gosh what am i going to do where am i going to go it was just sort of i had so much peace and i just felt like god was leading me and so i was just like you know as long as i walk in obedience to him i'm just gonna be led and i'm gonna watch doors open and that's what happened i never came out thinking i want to be a brand ambassador that is what i'm going to do no it's just began with just doing the daily simple things um living life and you know sharing my testimony and then that that now gained momentum and got me to the place where i was today so um i would like to say it was effortless but there was effort in that um it took the daily obedience and the daily conscious decision of like okay i'm gonna do this and not do this so that i can you know keep climbing in letting go emotionally physically you have this acronym called ppts yeah so what's that so PPTs is people, places, and things. The S at the end is part of the things. <laughs> so those are like the groups or what you need to be um, very deliberate about when you're rebuilding your life. Who am I hanging around people? Which places am I going? What am I exposing myself to in these places? What's the atmosphere like? What are people doing there? And then lastly, the things are like, what am I engaging myself in? What am I spending my time doing? Um, what am I consuming? Just little things, things, things. So letting go of the people, places, and things I once knew, let me not lie, in the beginning was very difficult, especially because... Um, number one, I was coming out of a six-year relationship with a guy I just thought was my world. I thought this guy walked on water, you know. I just thought this guy was everything. I had already <laughs> and visually we were going to get married, wedding bells, and what our kids would look like. Uh, but alas, um, God, God was like, no, no, no. So that was one of the biggest things to let go of. You know, when you're used to having someone in your life and you're daily talking to them and you know all of that stuff that was super difficult friends um was also a bit difficult but i took conscious steps um something as practical as blocking someone's number 
or on Facebook or on social media, something as practical as changing your number and just making sure that you're taking steps in order to change. Now, also being in rehab helped because for such an extended period of time, I had been used to doing the three month, three month, but now I began to do the one year, I did the one year program. And so that gave me a transition period in which I was isolated from the things I knew, which was a tough period of time because um, I didn't have the, the daily comforts, you know, Wi-Fi, a phone and stuff like that. And so, um, but that was a necessary period of time because now it's building me to be able to withstand that. And so after you because you stay six weeks without your first phone call so after that i was already like sort of you know how you're winning a child off of <laughs> nini so i was like coming away coming away coming away and then the more i built myself and had you know the blinds taken off to see this was a toxic relationship these were toxic people then by the time i even came out like i was already at a place where i'm like no i'm not entertaining that and let me just say the more you gain self-worth and you know who you are and um, your self-esteem rises, then you're much more picky about who you let into your space because you're like, no, we're not at the same, like, you know, it's, and it's not a pride thing, but it's like, I understand who I am and whose I am. And for that reason, I will not expose myself to these people. I will not be in a situation like this because I'm, I'm better than that. And so I got built from the inside out so by the time i was on the outside i'm just like nope and it wasn't even a thing where i was like at the beginning obviously i'm like okay don't text don't text don't text don't text like in the rehab i'm like should i should i not like when i get my phone time and stuff like that but by the end imagine i was so cool so so cool so so cool you have shared with us that you even dealt with a breakup at yeah. some point maybe you can just fill us in on how that was yeah mm -hmm. when you're in christian let me see is it called courtship or dating christian dating i don't know which whichever you'll pick you feel like like when you <laughs> like when you're led to this person or you feel led like for me that time i was like i'm walking in the spirit surely i know i'm being led in this direction <laughs> And also, like, when your heart is invested somewhere, you'll be like, you know, God, I know, I know you're on board for this one. So I was, I never expected, I thought the first person I'll ever be with now that I've committed my life to Christ will just end in just wedding bills. And um, I was wrong because after a few months into it, it obviously ended. And I was, I was heartbroken, but not really heartbroken. Um... Yeah, because I knew, okay, if this is not the thing, let me move on from it. But not only heartbreak, but other struggles I like have, have come, you know, post being there. And it's taken, number one, my support system. I'm so grateful that I have an amazing support system that is my family, my mom. I'm so grateful. I used to loathe the fact that my mom was a reverend. Now I'm just like, teach me your ways. <laughs> like, let me hang out with you. Let me breathe. Let me, breathe. <laughs> you know. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm so privileged that I get to have my mom be my pastor as well. And so that, that closeness has, uh, has been a banner or not a banner, like a tent, a covering for me. Um, another thing is God. I mean, I, that should have been first, you know, when the Lord says that he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, it's not, no lie. It's not like he's in heaven. He's like, unadu, umedu, okay. No, he's really in us and around us to be able to just help us through um those moments um so i would say those two are what have helped me and also knowing who i am you know because sometimes when people go through a breakup because that was your identity that was your life now it becomes like i can never i can never um but the fact that you're so secure in your identity and you just want god's best for you so when struggle comes and things don't happen your way, you know that, you know what, God has his best for me. So if this didn't work out, it means that it's not the best. And that, that also, that attitude is, 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 helps you do life. And let me say, attitude is so important because one person can go through struggle, another one can go through struggle. This one, actually, the struggle propelled them. 
to the next level this one they go through the struggle it's what takes them down so the way our perspective and outlook to struggle is super super important Speaking of struggles 2020 oh my goodness has been 2020 <laughs> 2020 it's been quite the year it's been a tough year for a, a great number of people obviously the whole world has been affected um in your own life maybe you could share with us how you define 2020 in terms of like a statement, a song, a lesson, I don't know. Yeah. Let me say, and I don't don't care if somebody will say this is cliche. My word for 2020 is expansion. And you might think like, why expansion? But it is because oftentimes when we are in our comfort zone, we don't grow. For humans, let me just say this. When you're in sitting in comfort, you're content, and oftentimes that leads to stagnation. But for me, I've been, found myself being put in places where I have to think outside the box. I'm being challenged on a daily basis. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being called to arise in an, in new ways, to be creative, to you know, which has seen actual expansion in so many areas of my life. And I feel like if I had just been comfortable or life was just as usual, I wouldn't have thought up some of the things I've thought up. I wouldn't have gone some of the places I have. I wouldn't have gotten a chance to encourage some of the people or just be built me in and of myself. So expansion for me in that challenges cause you to, man, they put you, you know, like <laughs> you're just like it's a do or die. So let's do. And um, yeah, so expansion. My greatest lesson oh my gosh i feel like there's so much pressure to be philosophical <laughs> i'm like let me say i like need to quote a verse at the end no i'm just kidding um so i think my biggest lesson of 2020 is definitely that life is not a straight line you know there are ups and there are downs not only in 2020, but I've learned this in my whole life, and there are seasons. Um, but one thing to note is that there's always hope for change. I think the most depressing or the most shattering space to be in life is one where there's no hope. So you can be going through a bad situation and if you or a bad season, and if you are not hopeful for the next you've sort of thrown in the towel and that's where the enemy wants people who are in in situations that are not favorable but when you have hope even in a bad season or even in a time of struggle um it keeps you going and it and it keeps you looking forward to different seasons so we go through that but hope should remain alive because that's that's our fuel yeah Thank you guys so much for joining me on this two-part segmented video, uh, just recapping or going down memory lane to my seven years of addiction. I pray that um, if there's one thing you've gotten, it's that no situation is permanent. Um, many people tell me today they can't believe that everything I've spoken about, I really went through, but I really did. And um, I'm grateful to God to be able to be sitting here today to give encouragement or spur somebody on or teach somebody in one way or another. One more shout out to Sif Creative Galaxy who have been just so amazing in making sure that this comes together. Uh, in case you enjoyed this video, one more time. Hit the subscribe button down below. Join the notification gang. I'll see you guys in my next video. Ciao.